All right, Terry has just said it's ready. To, he's all ready, so let's begin. Um, welcome to worship on the second weekend of Advent. However, you're um, accessing us. We're grateful that you can be here with Lakeview Lutheran Church um, once again for this special day. Um, this week, a reminder that there is a blood drive on December 10th. And Terry told me this morning that he is in need of some more volunteers. Two more volunteers. Two more. Dana, so if Dana, if you can pull yourself together, you could volunteer to do that. Somebody else, um, if you could uh, let Terry know, he'd love that. And then the other thing, of course, is to remind you to um, go to the Red Cross website or call the church office and have Laura sign you up for a slot to donate blood. Remember that the following week, your reservations are due for the uh, um, scallop potato dinner on December 22nd. And while I'm talking to, about Terry, uh, getting ready for blood drive, I just want to thank Terry and Sue again for all they do in putting these services together and the videotaping and all that kind of stuff. Terry and Sue just celebrated their 49th wedding anniversary this past week. They got wild and crazy and got carry out Chinese food. Sue was only five at the time of their marriage, 49 years ago. Um, anyway, that's what she claims. Terry was already an old man, but we congratulate them on 49 years and give thanks for their work on all of this uh, electronic stuff. Um, I don't think I have anything else to announce other than a reminder that uh, Christmas service will be uh, virtual, completely virtual, and it will be available to you on YouTube and on the Facebook page on the morning of December 24th. The Sunday service, December 27th, will not be available to those of you who Zoom. It will be a pre-recorded service and put out on Facebook and YouTube like all the other services are. We just simply won't be doing it on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. And then my final service here on the 3rd of January, we are working to live stream so that you are able to uh, pick up the live stream link and participate if you would like to. Pastor Steve Kotke and Greg Steinhauer will be a part of that service as it is a sending service. So I will silence myself and you can silence things. And for those of you watching by video, you will see all of the ornaments that have come in so far on the Christmas tree. We've added a lot since last week. If you haven't gotten your ornament in, we look forward to that. Uh, the rest of us right now will appreciate Lynn's uh, prelude and we'll prepare our hearts for worship.
come together in worship, we believe that God has a purpose for all human histories. We come together in worship as God waits with eternal patience, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. We come knowing that life with God can be good and full of promise. We come knowing that human lives will end, which encourages us to struggle with what sort of person we should be. As siblings in Christ, let us live at peace with each other in holiness and godliness as we await for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Christmas comes, but not yet. If you're at home lighting an Advent wreath, I invite you to light both two candles today. We, we light the second Advent candle today as a prayer of hope and longing that God's glory may be revealed on earth through justice, peace, and faithful love. Advent is a time of hope for the world and for our eternity. Let us pray. Living God, come to our world. Help us to recognize that not all people experience liberty and justice. Help us to see your presence wherever people make peace, show kindness, keep their promises, and do what is right. Amen.
I, somebody who is on Zoom is making noise. Would you please mute yourselves? I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Today, for the second weekend in Advent, we read from 2 Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for the hastening, the coming of the day of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with God's promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. So they say patience is a virtue. You may have heard that. A virtue is any quality that we find desirable in a person. My virtue is sarcasm. Oh, wait, a virtue is a desirable quality, so it can't be that. Well, maybe I don't have a virtue. Well, I can tell you this, though. I simply don't have enough patience. Maybe you've noticed that. I often, frequently have a hard time being patient because I want what I want, and I want it now. And guess what? I'm not alone. Because I know most of you so very well. I also know that many of you don't always have the patience you'd like. You too want what you want, and you want it now. Need I remind us of the virus and our responsibility to wear those masks, which I do all the time except when I'm trying to preach, because they were not made for a microphone around the ear, Need I need to remind you about those masks, or staying in our houses, or refrain from gathering? How many of us have lost patience with all of that, even as the situation continues to get worse, and as people, healthy, responsible medical people predict, it will continue to get worse. And if you haven't lost patience over the pandemic, I know that you've lost patience over your internet connection because everybody loses patience over charter. Advent is also about patience. Last weekend we talked about waiting. This week we are encouraged to be patient as we wait for the coming of Christ. While we trust that Christ will return, it's been over 2,000 years, and we, like the recipients of that second letter to Peter today, wonder what is taking so long. When we question this, we are reflecting our loss of patience. So the author of that reading today from 2 Peter is attempting to account for our impatience over what feels like a delay in Christ's coming. The author tries to encourage us with the impression that God's idea of time and our human idea of time are simply not the same thing. And the author reminds us that as we find it hard to have patience, God does not. God is patient. The delay that we experience in Christ's coming is really an example of God's divine patience with us and with our human sinfulness and our stubbornness. God gives us a time to find a path to know God and then to repent 
of our selfish desires. God gives human beings time, time to become morally correct. Christians, Hindus, Jews, Muslims, and indigenous spirituality all define being morally correct as the idea that people are living a life that is pleasing to God. And when our lives are morally correct and pleasing to God, that's when we can find peace. So the author of 2 Peter encourages us to stop trying to calculate when the return of Christ will happen as we wait patiently. The author encourages us with advice for how we should live as we wait for this event. Now, you and I both know of people and organizations that have attempted to tell us when the world as we know it is going to end. We've all heard the exact dates of when Christ will return. The Mayans, some of the most well-known, who historically predicted 2012, were wrong, because it's 2020. And so now, today, an, an apocalyptic evangelist named Bill Begley, and you can Google him and get more information, he's predicting that the end of the world will occur, get ready, on December 21st, 2020. Terry's shaking his head in gratitude because he won't have to pay for a big celebration for their 50th wedding anniversary. Now, you know that this date is coming very soon. This date also happens to be Begley's birthday. Begley is playing into the fears of those of you of, and many of us who have questioned if the pandemic and racial unrest and mean-spirited elections and an amazing hurricane season have all meant that the world is coming to an end. And the truth is, he could be correct, but he could also be incorrect. Because the biblical response is still that we don't know the answers. The Bible is very clear that we'll never know the answers. And the author of 2 Peter helps us understand that we don't need to be concerned about finding those answers. The biblical directive instead is to be prepared. I don't know when Christ will return, but I do know that the Bible tells us what we should be doing as we await for that event. We are called to celebrate the wait. Celebrate the wait, because it is an example of God's grace. That's terrific. God wants the world to know salvation. God loves the world, and God does not want any portion of it to perish. So we are called to celebrate the wait by reflecting on our own relationship with God and how that relationship can be without spot or blemish. Instead of deciding who is wrong in the world, we can better use our time to figure out how we, we, can better be right. How we can better live a righteous life. We are called to celebrate the weight by imitating the example that Jesus has already given us. The time of waiting that we live in can be used to stop judging others, and to put our own house in order. Or, for many of you who like this saying, to get your ducks in a row. Waiting gives us time to consider where we can be more forgiving, caring, loving, and accepting. It gives us a chance to honestly work for liberty and justice for all people. The pandemic, racial unrest, mean-spirited elections, 
and an amazing hurricane season can provide us with opportunities to do something morally correct as we patiently wait. We have been given the gift of time to act. Amen. Our hymn today happens to be my favorite Advent hymn, entitled All Earth is Hopeful from ELW 266. Terry Lance, thank you for singing this morning. and come quickly to this weary world. Patient God, you give us time to better know and serve you. You have given us Jesus as an example of what that service can look like. Now move our hearts to respond to your gifts. Move our hearts, minds, and hands to be more concerned with your call to love than with our human desire to understand your mystery. Today, we pray for the victims of fires in Australia and California. We pray for hospitals throughout the world which are under stress because of the virus. Move us to take action to protect our neighbors and all medical providers. We pray for people facing eviction during colder weather and the pandemic. We pray for the family of the Madison East High School student. We pray for Bishop Joy Mortensen Wiebe and her family as Joy's husband struggles in the hospital and her daughter struggles at home, both with the virus. We pray for all others, known and unknown, for whom this virus has taken a toll. We also lift to you Jody Nelson as she strives for recovery and struggles with the death of her wife, Julie. Come with hope and comfort to all who grieve this morning. Bring your healing touch to those who are ill, including Mary, Georgia, Pam, Sandy, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for everyone in need. Amen. Together we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In today's Music for Meditation, you're going to hear a very familiar carol to you. It's entitled, Go Tell It on the Mountain. This is an African-American spiritual. Spirituals are one of the few genres of music that are originated here in the United States. Spirituals originated with African American people who were enslaved, as I'm sure you know. They were originally oral in tradition. That means they were unaccompanied and just voices singing them. They attempted, the purpose of the spiritual was to uplift Christian values while acknowledging the hardships of slavery. Spirituals are what we call monophonic. They didn't have any harmony. They were sung without any accompaniment. In 1907, John Wesley Works Jr. published a collection of spirituals in a book entitled Folk Songs of American Negroes. Works attended Fisk University an historically black college in Nashville, Tennessee. He was a professional musician, and later he was a professor at Fisk. Go Tell It on the Mountain was included in this 1907 book. There is reason to believe that this spiritual, which we call a Christmas carol, actually dates back to 1865. Go Tell It on the Mountain continues to be a part of our Evangelical Lutheran worship hymnal. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs>
Thank you, Lynn. Some of you might say, well, that was kind of a jazzy arrangement, and I would like to just note that jazz happens to be one of the other very few genres of music that's American-born. Now, receive the blessing. The creator of the stars bless you this Advent season, this your Advent waiting. Let me begin that over again. The creator of the stars bless your Advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>